Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Erin Lowry. Thank you for joining me here in Dallas, Texas on the Valder Beebe Show as I broadcast live across the nation. How are you? I'm doing well, and thanks for having me. I want my audience to know that Erin Lowry, I think her um, alternative name is Brooke Millennial. I'm not <laughs> sure about that. She's going to help us tackle investments for just some, some of you newbies. So stay tuned and stay connected. Erin, our first question is investing different for millennials than it is for other people? Well, that's a great question. I mean, really the thing that millennials have still, as we are aging, but we still definitely have the advantage of time being on our side, which is truly one of the biggest benefits for investors, particularly people who are on the younger end of the millennial generation and still in their 20s, now is really the time to get started. And for a lot of folks, it's easy to put investing off, even investing for retirement and thinking, oh, I'll just wait till I've achieved this particular milestone. Maybe it's paid off student loan debt. Maybe it's getting a certain amount of money as income. But really, you want to get started as soon as you can. Well, that's advice for all of us that we all can take. Certainly. Correct? Yes, it is. OK. Well. What are some affordable ways for us to invest so that we can still kind of live a life but still be smart about our money? Well, really, there are just so many opportunities to be investing today, more than ever before. And a big reason of that, of course, is technology. And you don't have to go in necessarily and talk to a financial advisor anymore, or meet with a wealth management firm, and you don't have to have a high net worth in order to even get started. You can turn to all sorts of different options, being a do-it-yourself investor, or maybe turning to the online platform such as SoFi Invest, which offers a variety of opportunities for you. I want my audience to know we're talking about millennials also today. That's the focus of it. And remember, millennials are born between 1981 and 1996. And there's even this group called post-millennials born 1997 to the present. So those are probably your kids and your grandkids, so keep that in mind. Let me ask you, Erin, um, I called you a millennial. You are a millennial, so you're giving us firsthand information, correct? That's right. I'm 30 years old. I'm right smack dab in the middle of the generation. Okay. For everyone, but specifically millennials, it's never too late to start investing, correct? Or too early. That's right. And I think really what you want to think about when it comes to is it too late is really evaluating what is your goal. Because you want to make sure that you're investing in a way that aligns with your risk tolerance and the amount of risk you're willing to put on your money. Now, for people who might have a goal that's in the next couple of years, regardless of the generation you're in, that's money that you probably don't want to put much, if any, risk on because you don't want to risk any sort of dip or losing any of that money. But if your goal is many years, even decades away, great example, of course, is retirement, then that is money that you can afford to put a little bit of risk on or maybe a lot of risk, depending on your risk tolerance, in order to see better returns. Okay. One of the sure things for uh, investing, in a sense, is your 401k, correct? Do you see it that way? Well, I would never think of any investment as a quote-unquote sure thing. I would always kind of hesitate to use that language. But one of the things that you certainly can take advantage of when it comes to a 401k is an employer match, because that can really kind of be viewed as free money on the table. So if your employer offers to match you up to a certain percent, let's say 4 or 5%, then you want to make sure you're putting at least 4 or 5% in in order to get that full match. And the other thing you want to make sure that you understand is what's called a vesting schedule. Now, any money you put into a 401k is always yours to keep. But you've got to think about when it vests, which means when can you also walk away with your employer money. And that's something that you want to talk to either your payroll or HR about to make sure that you understand when you can walk away with your full 401k. I'm going to take this question off of Facebook because people listen to us on different platforms. And the question is they want to know that they are an entrepreneur millennial. What suggestions would you have for them since they don't have the traditional investing methods? Love this question, especially as a self-employed person myself. It's incredibly important to know your options. And you don't have the advantage of an employer matched 401k, so it's all about you and it's up to you. Now, some of the things you could look into is either a traditional or a Roth IRA. 
Or you could look into something called a SEP, S-E-P, IRA, because that's going to give you opportunities to put even potentially more money into the market, depending on how much you earn in a year. Great advice. Talk a little bit with uh, my audience about cryptocurrency. Now, when it comes to cryptocurrency, this is something that just kind of sounds fun and flashy to a lot of people, but you do want to proceed with a little bit of caution. I like to advise making sure that you're only investing money that you could potentially stomach losing. Now, not all brokerages or even online platforms allow for you to invest in cryptocurrency, so you can turn to SoFi Invest and look in the app there in order for opportunities to invest in crypto if it's something you're interested in. Why would we invest in something we don't understand, maybe? Or maybe you're saying millennials do understand cryptocurrency? I'm not saying all millennials do. Certainly blockchain, which is the underlying technology, can be quite complicated. And I think for some people, it's just something that they frankly want to dabble in and explore a little bit, get hands on. And for other people, the risk tolerance might not be there to invest in cryptocurrency, partly because they don't understand how it works. But I would really encourage anyone who is going to invest in it to make sure that you do as much research as you can and try to be able to explain it to other people in language they can understand. That really shows whether or not you understand it yourself. Okay. I'm going to take this final question from Facebook. I see all of you guys' questions, but I can only take so many. And they want to know, Erin, uh, the poster wants to know, is, it investing, is in is investing in products that you use a good idea? That's a great you know question. You know, and I'm sorry, we do have to leave today. It's a great question. And, you know, sometimes it can be, but that shouldn't be the only way you're investing. I'd also look at ETFs and index funds. And thank you so much for having me here today. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to MyPhonePouch.com. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of The Valder Beebe Show. I have used Credit Help USA, the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and the Valder BB Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit credithelptx.com, click on the Valder BB Show icon, and get started living life divinely. <music>